In 1997, Titanic broke box office records around the world. But director James Cameron didn't make the first Titanic hit movie. I did. A Night to Remember, considered by many to be the most authentic, was Cameron's inspiration. He even sent me a letter acknowledging the effect my vision had on his film. When I was six years old, my father took me to the launch of the Titanic. It was a day that lived with me for the rest of my life. The smell of the sea mingled with the smells of the shipyard. My heart swelled with Irish pride. This great ship had been built by people like me. Something happened to the young William McKitty that day. The Titanic became part of him. Like so many others, William McKitty was devastated by the Titanic tragedy. Now a producer of informative films for the government, it was 45 years later, and Titanic was about to come back into his life. His wife had returned home from hospital with their newborn daughter. She also had with her a preview manuscript for a new upcoming book, A Night to Remember. Here were the real life testimonies of what actually happened that night. Painstakingly researched, it was heart-wrenching in its detail. I secured the film rights with the author Walter Lord. Then I took the proposal straight to the rank organization. But they thought it was just another shipwreck film. Even worse, they couldn't believe I was asking for half a million pounds to make a shipwreck in black and white. They wanted VistaVision and Technicolor. I wanted documentary realism, but I wasn't going to leave without a green light. And he got it. Filming began in October 1957. The biggest task was to find a ship to stand in for Titanic. McQuitty sourced the dismantled one in Glasgow. There was a problem though. Only the starboard side remained intact, and it was the port side we needed. So I asked for mirrors to be fixed in the camera to transform it. The scenes were shot back to front and even the name Titanic had to be written on backwards. The first scenes filmed were the lowering of the lifeboats. The actors had a tough time. We filmed in a reservoir in the winter and the cold of the water was so intense, Kenneth Moore, who played second officer Lighthaller, said it was just like jumping into a deep freeze. Most of the time they weren't acting. They were desperate to be rescued. For William McQuitty, a producer of informative films during the wartime documentary movement, authenticity was key. Thanks to his friendship with Walter Lord, he had the input of several survivors during production. On a number of occasions, many were struck silent by the realism of what they saw. We did it. Five months later, it opened in Leicester Square and audiences loved it. The popular press were ecstatic, and the reviews were the best there had ever been for a film from the rank organisation. To this day, it still remains the most accurate account of the ship sinking. Usually I felt sad when one of my films was finished, but that was not the case with A Night to Remember. It brought me back to Belfast. I felt my life had come full circle, and I was proud to see her sail once more.